Welcome back, everybody, to Edgeworth Explains Logic. <laughs> In the way that only he can, of course. How did the dirt get inside the costume? In the video footage, it's very likely that someone was inside the costume. But who could it have been? Hmm. Where have I seen this? What's the matter, Kay? I just feel like I remember seeing something that looked like this in dirt somewhere before. But where was it? Oh, well, yeah, well, I don't know. You know, that thing I could have presented before where I was like, Hey, you know, this thing kind of looks like that dirt there. But they were like, no, this isn't good enough for me. <laughs> Freaking game, jeez Louise. There were these bits of gray fragments mixed in with the dirt. Gray fragments? There does seem to be something other than normal dirt mixed into it. I thought that was what the dirt was that they were talking about. Something must have gotten stuck to it. And lots of it, I might add. Hmm. Something got stuck to it. This may merit a closer look. Where do we see dirt that looks like what's stuck on the inside of the costume? Jeez Louise, my gosh. Apparently I'm just three steps ahead, apparently. This dirt has some gray bits mixed into it. Gosh, it sucks getting mistakes when you already know what's wrong with it. Huh? And what of it? We found an item belonging to a certain man that was covered in the same type of dirt. That is to say, these gloves. Those dirt stains certainly look the same. But tell me, what exactly is this gray substance? This gray substance is... Uh... Is there anything that would really hint at what it is? Concrete's broken, the ground beneath them is from really giant footprints. Plastic, concrete, or paint? I suppose concrete, maybe? This gray substance must be fragments of concrete. You mean, the stuff that was scattered around the monster's footprints? Exactly. Meanwhile, who do these gloves which are stained with the same kind of dirt belong to? Oh, I remember, we found it at Blaze's, Blaze's place. Earlier today, we went to Blaze's garage. There we discovered these dirt-stained gloves. Come to think of it, there were also hammers, shovels, and other tools placed inside as well. Why would mechanic glo mechanics gloves intended to be used on machines be covered in dirt? If you broke the concrete with the hammer, and then dug into the soil with the shovel, then it's only natural for dirt like that to get on the gloves. Then maybe... Yes, the true nature of the monster's footprints has been made clear. It's possible these footprints were dug up by Blaze the Best himself. It's possible. <laughs> It's possible, you say? Please do enlighten me. Because I honestly have no clue. Why on earth would he do something like that? Why did he make the monster footprints? Thinking about it, the answer must be... He was digging something up, he buried something? Uh... He buried something. I thought... I thought maybe... Uh, uh, like, maybe he buried evidence or something. I don't freaking know. Jeez Louise. Could it have been because he buried something? He buried something? I smell treasure. So what did he bury? If we want to find that out, we'll have to dig it up ourselves. So you think the police wouldn't have already investigated that? Um, no. I don't really have that much faith in the police force to be able to dig something up like that. There was absolutely nothing buried beneath those footprints. Nua! It seems that I was wrong. In that case, we should assume the opposite. He dug something up. It probably went something like this. Last night at this spot, there was something that Blaze needed to dig up. For that reason, he broke the lock on the back door and sneaked into the film lot. Using the hammer and the shovel, he set to work. That was how he did it. And it all turned gray in the end. 
He placed the items he dug up into his bag, but before he could fill the holes... Ah! That's when John came to practice! Exactly. Blaze panicked and had no choice but to hide himself in the Mozilla costume nearby. Grrr. To think you would deduce so much from just a pair of dirt-stained gloves. However, all of this is merely a possibility. There's still no proof that he was the one who was hiding inside the costume. For all we know, he might have left the scene once he finished digging. Objection! Who knows? On the contrary, such proof does exist, and can be seen in the video. When this video was recorded, Blaze was definitely inside the film lot. What? Though I can't blame Agent Lang for not noticing. The difference between the current film lot... ...and the one in John's video. Along with the state of Blaze's garage. Oh yeah, that, 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 mm, I see. It's all too clear that Blaze was still here. I mean, I see it now, I see that bag. Well, proves that Blaze was still at the film lot when the video was recorded. This thingy! He sure hit himself pretty well, though, all things considered. This bag placed near the costume. There was an identical one inside Blaze's garage. I mean, for all you know, he could have been, like, gone crazy and been like, Murder, murder, no! Da. First the dirt on the gloves, and now the bag. It seems there is a connection. Mechanics gloves data updated my organizer, worn by Blaze the Best, worn when he dug the monster's footprints like holes. And that's my proof. Blaze was inside the costume. Ergo, the president's body could not have been hi hidden inside it. Aye! It seems I was able to refute Agent Lang's reasoning. Someone needs to go investigate Blaze's house right away, pal! We need to know what was inside that bag! Yes, sir! Hold it! Y'all pipe down and listen up! Y'all just been saying whatever works best for y'all! And the noisy one returns. That there's the footprints of the Mighty Moselle. They ain't just some random holes dug up by that old coop. Hmm. I believe the true nature of these footprints has already been proven quite logically. Logic schmogic. I ain't buying it. Say what you want, but I know what I saw, and I saw Muzel. Is she referring to how she saw Muzel out the window of the Grand Tower? Preposterous. Upon our journalist souls, we ain't having none of that. None of it. That statement is an insult to journalists everywhere. Ah, that's right. There's more to that monster than just those footprints. I remember hearing that Sonny over there was seen with the monster the earlier. I reckon that gal over there said she witnessed it herself. When these two are together, all meaningful talk grinds to a halt. If we only knew just what the monster really was, I think those two would quiet down. Mr. Edgeworth, isn't there anything you can do? The monster's true identity. We don't have much choice. Let's see what we can do. Is there something y'all ain't telling us about that monster? Nicole, ask him. Ask him right now. Please settle down. Regarding the true identity of that monster, I already know what it is. What do you say? That's right. The video John recorded provided the hint that I needed. What you talking about? Miss Nichols saw Gordy. When she went to check up on um, John's practice. At that time, she mistook something for Gordy. The monster can be seen in this photograph. The... Camera? What? Ain't, the, ain't that just some plain old souvenir photo? Y'all don't really think you can pull the wool over the eyes of a pro like me, do ya? What did Miss Nichols really see that she mistook for Gordy? Well... The only thing I can really think of is maybe this? But that wouldn't have been seen... I, I don't get it. 
That's the only thing I can really think of. And I guess that's the answer. Naturally, Gordy's true identity was... This camera crane. What? What? The video John recorded was shot from fairly high up. A shot from this vision would be impossible without a camera crane. But, there ain't no way Miss N Nichols would mistake a camera crane for Gordy. I wonder about that, Miss Nichols. Yes. Earlier you said the prescription for your glasses didn't match your eyesight anymore, correct? Yes, lately it seems like my eyesight has suddenly gotten a lot worse. So we say that you weren't able to see Gordy very clearly in the dark. That's right. Its silhouette was all I could make out. I remember what Miss Nichols said. And I quote, its skin was really scaly, almost like a reptile. Camera cranes ain't got no flesh on them, let alone skin. It's just a bare steel frame. That is certainly true, at least in the case of this photo. However, last night it did have skin. Y'all, hold it. Y'all just doing whatever you can to get in the way of our big scoop, ain't you? That was not my intention. But since I've come this far, it's time to put an end to your nonsense. Gordy's skin is right before our very eyes. This is the skin of Gordy that Miss Nichols saw. Uh... That? As Miss Nichols stated in her testimony earlier, it looked like it was going to rain last night. While it never actually rained, John still covered the camera crane with a rainproof sheet. Which to Miss Nichols looked like a monster's skin. What? You gotta be kidding me! Isn't that right, John? Man, you saw through it all. Not bad, old man. Unfortunately, the Gordy that Miss Nichols saw this was nothing more than an illusion. Not again. Looks like my dream has shriveled up and died once again. But mentor. Seems like things have finally settled down. I really thought the boy was hiding something from me. Guess I had it all wrong. Now that we figured it all out, the true form of the monster, everyone seems refreshed. Actually, there's two people here who are totally bummed out. Agent Lang! The report is in, sir. We've got the results of President Hong's autopsy. Good. Show it to me. Contusions and bone fractures found across the body, resulting from tremendous pressure. So this was the cause of death. In other words, he was crushed to death. I thought as much. Crime scene notes updated my organizer. COD, crushed to death. Time of death, April 5th, around 11pm. Touch the check button for details. The yellow stain on his chest is currently under investigation. But it seems that gunpowder residue was found on his right hand. Sunflower residue? I didn't know the present was in the gardening. No. Gunpowder residue. Traces of it are left behind when the gun is fired. Good job, Kay. Good job. So it has been found on his right hand. It's possible that the president fired a gun. A gun, huh? We didn't find any guns when we investigated this area. Hmm, or gunshot marks either, for that matter. Oh, uh, or did we? Oh no. Unexplained gunpowder residue. I'll have to look over the autopsy report later. Now then, Asian Lang. It seems we have our answer. Before we move on, I'm gonna go and check this real quick. D. Jen Hong, age 38. Gunpowder residue was found on his right hand. The yellow stain on his suit is currently being analyzed. Time of death, April 5th, around 11 p.m. Contusions, cause of death, contusions, and bone fractures found across the body, resulting from tremendous pressure. That's how it happened. Quite fascinating, really. The president did not die from falling off the roof of the Grand Tower. Rather, he died from being crushed under Brazil's head. I can't deny it. Looks like your logic was right after all. This means the suspicions surrounding Miss Courtney should be cleared up, right? Yes. 
Not only the cause of death, but the time of death proves their innocence as well. Judge Cordy met with the president two nights ago. However, according to the autopsy report, the time of death was around 11 p.m. last night. Buzilla's head also fell last night. It matches up perfectly. That's a relief. Isn't it a bit too early to be relieved? Agent Lang? The, pre the president died after being crushed by the Muzilla's head. That, I will admit. But the problem is, who was responsible for the falling head? Muzilla's head fell last night. And last night, the one who was at the film lot was... What are you saying? Surely you're not implying... Well... I mean, you don't have to imply it was John that did it. It could have been freaking... Blaze the best that did it. You never know. My gosh, he was there too. That's right. You killed him, didn't you? John Marsh. What about Blaze? He was there. Dot, 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 dot. That pup is hiding something. He was at the scene where the body was discovered last night. He also saw the footprints. And despite that, he still claims to know absolutely nothing about the incident. Isn't that a bit too convenient? Objection! These footprint-shaped holes have not been proven to be related to the case. Just because he saw the holes doesn't necessarily mean that he's involved in the incident. You sure about that? Take a look at the pup's face. Dot 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 dot. He looks pretty. He looks pretty shaken up to me. It looks like he hit the mark. But John doesn't want to talk about it. If he doesn't feel like talking, then I have no idea of my own. Let's check the tape. Agent Lang, what is your intention? The police have a device that lets you analyze the video footage up close and personal. Agent Lang, you must suspect John enough to go that far. As long as John's lips are sealed. This may be the only way for us to get closer to that truth. Detective Gumshoe. If I'm not mistaken, you have the device with you, correct? Mr. Analysis, ready to go, sir! Na now we're talking. Prosecutor Edgeworth, will you please perform the video analysis for us? He wants me to do it. Who knows what kind of faults that Wolfman will find in it? This isn't exactly my strong suit, but I suppose I have no choice. Are there any clues shown in the video? Uh, are we actually going to see anything in the video, particularly, or, uh, Zoom? I can't say I really remember how to really work this thing. Eureka! Oh shoot. No, no! It's a Muzilla costume. If you zoom in, you can see that the back of it is unzipped. Yeah, Mr. Powers was supposed to get inside the play to play the monster in the movie. But I don't really get it. The Muzilla in the movie is supposed to be big enough to demolish an entire building. Once he's inside the costume, how does he activate its Meg Megazord form? I think you have a big misunderstanding. The costume doesn't actually become big. I see. That's, what's big is not the costume, but the misunderstanding. Hmm. I think I kind of get it now, thanks! Does she really understand? Uh... Was there some way I could like rewind and fast forward it or something? I don't really see any hints right there. Or there. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's cool, I guess. Can't see it unless you zoom in. This is... What the? I mean, come on! You should at least be able to see it a little bit when zoomed out. What's the matter? I want to see too. Hmm? Eek! Hey, what's wrong? Show it to me. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I request you submit the evidence to the court. Please take a look at the top right corner of the zoomed-in video. Th this is... This person is... Th the president! Impossible! Ah, uh, no way! 
It seems we finally found it at last. The evidence that points to the true killer. This video places John at a major disadvantage. You're wrong. That's not right. I didn't know anything about this. That's not gonna cut it. It's clear that you and the victim were together at the same place where his body was later found. John Marsh, there's no doubt you killed the president. What about Blaze? He's still there. No, this can't be. Why? Why would you? John, please don't tell me. Did you really kill the president? Mr. Edgeworth, is this really decisive evidence? Mr. Prosecutor, looks like he... Looks like even you can't object to this. No. That pup said he didn't know anything, right? And yet the president's right here in this video. Dot, 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 dot. John, what are you hiding? John, please tell us the truth. The truth is... The truth is... It's all my fault. John Marsh, what did you do? Uh, Muzilla's head falling was all my fault. Oh, yeah? During the rehearsal, while I was setting up the equipment on the roof, I used the heater. I thought we clarified that it wasn't used. After that, I went down to practice, but I forgot to turn it off. Then my mom called me, so I left the film lot. When I came back to the lot after the phone call was over, Muzil's head that was on the roof had fallen. And right next to it was the president, lying dead on the ground. How can that be? I see. There were indeed traces that something had caught fire on the rooftop. It was just a small fire, so I was able to put it out by myself. So, the president's death was John's fault? But wouldn't that make it this an accident, sir? And then, what did you do with the fallen head? I took it apart, brought the pieces up to the roof, and put it back together. Not so, so you put out the fire and even put the fallen head back on the roof. Which means you were hiding evidence. We can't be having that, you naughty little pup. Hold it! I didn't do it on purpose, I really did just forget to turn off the heater. When the legs broke, the stand would have tilted. If Muzil's head was on top of the stand, it would have fallen off. It would have fallen off, so the head fell down because of the fire. Yes, if that's the case, I also have a pretty good idea what caused the fire. It's a flammable can next to the heater. It seems someone is lacking in safety awareness. Not so fast. Was it really just an accident? If that's the truth, then what was the president doing here? I, I don't know. There was no one else around when I was there. You expect me to believe that? The president wouldn't have just come to a place like this without a reason, you know. Indeed. The president's reason for coming here is still a huge mystery. Two nights ago, he met with Judge Courtney on the roof of the Grand Tower. And last night, he was here at the film lot. Did he meet with John? I'll have to listen to John's testimony very carefully. Rebuttal during the rehearsal. While I was setting up the equipment on the roof, I used the heater. Congratulations on using the heater. The heater did a lot of bad things, I'm afraid to say. It's a bit unfortunate. Alright, let's continue this, shall we? Excuse me. John, you are still young. I know it can get a little cold in early spring, but you shouldn't have to resort to a heater. It is precisely because he is young that he must make sure to take good care of himself. However, while it can get a bit chilly during this time of year, I wouldn't necessarily say... Hold it! Old man! Is this really the right time to be having this argument? Yeah, He's completely right! John, you did well to get the better of Mr. Edgeworth, but please mind your language. Let's not forget that he got the better of you too, Your Honor. I... I know, Mom. So, um, where was I? 
After that, I went down to practice, but I forgot to turn it off. I forgot to turn off the heater. You didn't check it before leaving the roof. I meant to turn it off, but I was too focused on practicing, so... And come on, everyone forgets stuff like that sometimes. Yeah, I gotcha. I forget small things like that all the time, too. Like, sometimes I'll forget to turn off the AC or the lights in Mr. Edgeworth's office. Or I'll jump off the ladder for his bookshelves. Or leave prank calls on his answering machine. But forgetting to turn off the heater is really dangerous, so you've got to be careful. Some of those things had nothing to do with forgetfulness. I was kind of thinking the same thing. I was like, wait, what? What's that have to do with forgetting? John, please continue. Looks like you've got it rough too, old man. Well, back to my story. Then my mom called me, so I let the film lot. It was late at night at the film lot. And not a single member of the film crew was around. So then, why did you have to leave the premises in order to answer the phone call? I totally forgot about the phone call thing, so I kind of panicked. If I didn't answer it fast, I would have been busted for leaving the hotel without permission. In that case, why didn't you just answer it here? Because I was rehearsing, all the cameras and mics were on. If I talked to you, every last word I said the mom would have been caught on camera. So he's embarrassed that the conversation with his mother would be recorded. Anyway, I stopped practicing for a bit and rushed out of the film lot. When I came back to the lot after the phone call was over. In that phone call, you lied and said you were at the hotel, correct? Why didn't you tell your mom that you were rehearsing? If I told her that, she would have called the hotel and made them send me a taxi or something. Of course I would have. Child alone in the streets at that time of night. What sort of parent would allow their child to be in such a dangerous situation? Hmm. I guess kids just don't understand how their parents feel. It goes both ways, Mr. Edgeworth. Indeed. Now then, John, please tell us about what happened after the phone call. Huh? Uh, oh, yeah, of course. When the call was finished, and I came back here. Muzel's head that was on the roof had fallen. Was there any indication that the head was about to fall? I... I don't know. I was focused on my rehearsal. So you forgot to turn off the heater, which led to a fire on the roof. I would think you should have at least heard something. Heard something? Oh, I was wearing headphones, so... Headphones? Listening to the movie soundtrack helps me get into the scene. Were you wearing headphones, good sir? That is a, tr that is a fact, he was indeed wearing headphones. Alright, well that checks out. Was he wearing headphones here by any chance? No. But anyway, that's, that doesn't really matter, it's not relevant to the other one. I had it on full blast, that's why I didn't hear anything. And did you notice your mother's incoming call? That's true. I had my phone on vibrate, old man, that's how I noticed. Anyways, the head had fallen. And right next to it was the president lying dead on the ground. What was the state of the body? I didn't get a good look, because it was dark. Dot, 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 dot. Hmm. He suddenly become as quiet as a mouse. I guess John doesn't really want to remember anything about the body. Is that the only reason why he's gone so quiet? Should I press him for more details? I mean, of course. You didn't get a good look. Then you... How did you know he was dead? Th that, that's... Well... He's clearly shaken. He must be hiding something. Wouldn't you normally call for help if you see someone collapse on the ground? However, you did nothing of the sort. But, buddy, he was already dead. Is that so? You seem quite certain that the president was already dead. Now, is there a reason for that, I wonder? The guy was collapsed on the ground, and right next to him was the fallen monster's head. I'm not stupid. It wasn't hard to imagine what happened. You can imagine whatever you want, but there's no way for you to know f that he was dead. You actually checked to make sure the president was dead, didn't you? Err, uh, yeah, that's right. I was scared, but I got up close to the body and checked to see if he was breathing. 
I thought as much. However, why would he hide that? There must be a reason. Please tell me the state of the body at the time. At first, I didn't know he was dead. I would have realized sooner if there had been many blood. But there wasn't a single drop and his clothes were completely spotless. Either way, he wasn't breathing. That's how I knew he was already dead. Would you please append those statements to your testimony? Then I present the photo and he's gonna be like, well, there wasn't completely spotless clothes. I didn't know there was right away that he was dead. There was no blood and his clothes were spotless. Hmm. Okay, so we got two things left, huh? I see. So you're unable to tell if he was dead because of the lack of stains on his clothes. Are you certain of that? Of course I am. You guys saw the body too, right? So what's the big idea? You said that the area was dark, and yet you were still able to make the observation. I'm telling you, there wasn't a single stain on his entire body. Give it a rest, old man. Heh. <laughs> Thank you, John. That was all I need to hear. Are clean clothes that important to you, Mr. Edgeworth? Mine are freshly washed, though. Next, can you tell me how you determined that the president was dead? Well, there wasn't anything to let me know right away that he was dead, you see. You see? Oh my gosh! No, I'm just kidding. He said you see, not you see. <laughs> how do you check if he had stopped breathing? They taught us how at school. You get right up close to the person's nose and check to see if you can feel their breath. I never thought I'd have to do it for real, though. That was really brave of you to be able to do something like that. John, you sure are amazing for an elementary school kid. Oh my gosh, middle school, for Pete's sake. Kay's in middle school. Please try to get that into your head sometime soon. It'd be pretty scary to see a corpse just suddenly appear out of the blue like that. Not to mention the fallen monster head lying right next to the body. Panic would certainly be an understandable response to such a situation. But still, all things considered, this was just an accident, right? Indeed, that is if we decide to take John's word at face value. I wouldn't mind having some more concrete, concrete details on the state of the crime scene. Well, anyway, where were we? His clothes were spotless! I don't need to check this evidence because I know for sure what it is that time. His clothes were spotless. Y yeah, that's right. You got a problem with it, old man? And, well, we already know what the problem is, but we're going to see what Ezra has to say about that problem on the exciting episode! Can we possibly understand why his clothes got into a mess like that? Honestly, I don't know. Like, where did that yellow stuff come from? Where in the world did it come from? Maybe we'll find out next episode. I don't know. I do not know. But what do you think, everyone? Do you think we'll find that out? I don't know, but I'll see you later either way on... Next episode. John, you're sweating. Stop sweating, man. Oh, it's not good for you to sweat so much. Your milk box is even sweating for Pete's sake.